So you've decided to program a Citrans LT500 level controller. First, let's take a look at our application details. We have a customer that wishes to measure level in a 13 meter deep wet well. They would like a low level alarm at one meter to ensure that there's always a certain amount of liquid in the tank and a high level alarm at 12 meters. They have three pumps which they would like to alternate in order to remove the liquid from the wet well. One that comes on at 6 meters, another at 8, and a third at 10 meters of level. All three pumps will turn off at 2 meters of level. When the LT500 powers up, we're taken to the top level view. From here, we can quickly configure our device for our level operation by going through the Quick Start wizard. We will select measurement point one, as we only have one application that we are monitoring, and level. The customer wants to measure in meters, which is the default, and the LT500 will automatically detect any smart sensors which are connected to the device. And in this case, the customer has elected to use the Citrans LR120 radar transmitter, which is ideal for wet wells with its narrow beam angle. The lower calibration point is the distance from the sensor to the bottom of the tank. In this case, in our application, this is 13 meters. The upper calibration point is the distance from the full material level to the sensor. In this case, zero meters, because we can measure directly up to the sensor face on the LR120. For this particular application, we will use a medium response rate, and it's for liquids. And that's it. We're up and running with our level application. It's as easy as that. Now we can go in and we can configure our pump control. We're going to use measurement point one. And this particular customer wants three pumps configured using the alternate duty assist mode. Pump one will be on relay one, pump two on relay two, and you guessed it, pump three on relay three. The onset point for pump one will be at six meters. And the offset point will be at two meters. Pump two will turn on at eight meters of level. And again, off at two. And pump three will turn on at 10 meters of level. So all of our pumps will turn off at the two meter level mark. And there we go, we've configured our pump control for on off set points. Now we can exit the quick commissioning wizard and we can go back to our top level view. We can see that we now have a measurement which is coming in at 11 meters of level. And if we go to our next view, we can see that we have three relays programmed and all three of them are currently running because we are over our onset points. Now let's set up our high and low level alarms. Under the setup menu and process values, you will see all of the different PVs which we can set warnings and alarms on. To set our upper alarm limit, we go into upper alarm and select 12 meters as the customer indicated. For our lower alarm limit, we will set this to one meter. In order to assign those alarms to a relay, we will go to the Inputs and Outputs menu and select Relay 4, as relays 1 to 3 are used for pump control. Select Alarms and Diagnostics, and then Process Alarms, and we can select the level alarms which are currently enabled. Relay 4 will be our high level alarm, and Relay 5 will be our low level alarm.
We have now set our two alarms, four and five. We can add a third alarm on Relay 6 for our sensor diagnostics, following the same steps. Under Inputs and Outputs and Relay number 6, we can turn on Alarms and Diagnostics and select our sensor diagnostics. This will allow us to choose any of the sensor diagnostics which we wish to turn on the relay. Say Sensor Not Found, uh, Invalid Configuration or Communication Error, um, sensor has changed, sensor not calibrated, and definitely a loss of echo. Sensor failure, and we can save our settings. So now we have a sixth relay programmed. From here, we can enable data logging. If we go to the Maintenance and Diagnostics section and the Memory Card menu, we can go to the Data Logging menu. We can set which process values we wish to log. For example, our level for process value 1, our distance for process value 2, and let's say in value three, we want to log our sensor temperature. We can select what our logging interval would be. And let's say this customer would like every one minute for us to log those three process values. And then we can enable logging. We can now see in our top level view that in the bottom right hand corner, the memory card icon is shown. This illustrates to us that we are currently logging data. From here, now that we've set up our configuration for the customer, we can create a backup restore point. Under maintenance and diagnostics and restore setup menu, we can create a restore point. You may choose any name that you wish. It will also be date coded when it's saved to the memory card. And we can save that file. Once the restore point is created, then we could use that restore point to back up our device, uh, or we can take the memory card out and put it into another device and do a very quick commissioning that way uh, through the restore feature. So there's our basic setup. Um, the only other thing that I thought I would mention uh, real quick is that if you're looking for advanced pump features, uh, we have a pump control menu where you can add on modifiers like wall cling reduction, um, on delays, run on, uh, inflow discharge adjustments, delay between starts. Um, on uh, your device uh, for this particular application, when I'm going to show you uh, my demo in a second, let's turn off all the delays so that the relays activate quickly in our simulation. Uh, we can also do a power resumption delay, which means that we will hold off on turning any pumps back on if power is lost to the vise. And as everything is coming back on, we don't want to overload those circuit breakers, so we can put in a delay upon uh, power being reapplied to all the equipment at the site. So let's take a look at uh, what that report would look like um, for all of the settings that we just made in our backup and uh, some of the data logs, and then we'll run a simulation. So here I have my PC and I've connected a USB cable to my LT500 and we will see that pop up as soon as I plug it in. So here we have the LT500, it shows up just like an external drive. And I can go in and I can look at my restore file that I just created. So it's called backup and I can open that up. And here we have a text file, um, which I mean is okay to read. It's got all the data that we just created. Um, but what would be easier is if I open Excel and I go to data and I pull in from a text file or CSV type file, I can select my backup file and I can convert it into Excel in a much easier to read format if I just select semicolon and then go load. 
So there we get a uh, much cleaner report, um, something that uh, is fairly easy to save, to print out, to leave with your customer, uh, to keep on file. Um, and that is the, uh, the backup file. So not only does it serve as a file which you can take from unit to unit to easily configure your devices, uh, but it also allows you to print all the parameters and settings uh, that you have in the device. So if we come back, we can take a look at uh, a data log file. And again, uh, we can pull these up uh, in a text format and we can see all of the different values uh, that we've been logging um, and uh, what we have available on the device. Again, you can pull this into Excel to make it a little uh, easier to sort or to print. Um, we have our alarm change log, uh, which shows us all of the different alarms uh, turning on and off. Uh, so again, we can see what's turning on, turning off, coming and going. And we also have our uh, parameter change log. So this shows us um, what we have changed in the device, all the different parameter settings. Um, and that, that allows us to uh, audit what has been changed in the device, also what firmware has been updated. So there's a quick look at uh, what you have available on the micro memory card. Uh, so now let's go take a look at uh, what a simulation would look like to double check everything that we've done has been set up properly. So here we have our LT500 and everything's been programmed. And now we want to run a simulation to make sure that we've programmed everything properly and all of our pumps and relays will activate when they should. So if we go into the simulation menu, and under process values, we're going to simulate level 0.1. Um, our simulation will start at zero meters and it will run uh, fast so that we can see changes quickly. And we're going to use a ramp simulation so that our process value will go up and down over its entire uh, set point rather than a fixed value. So we can go back to our top level view and our simulation will have already started. So we can see as we come up to six meters of level, our first pump will turn on um, as that's our first set point. And as we move on to eight meters, our second pump will turn on, followed by our third pump at 10 meters. Now, as you recall, we had a high level alarm at 12 meters, which is relay four. And then as we come back down, as the simulation continues to run, so our high level alarm has now turned off, at two meters, all of our pumps will simultaneously turn off. And then as we approach one meter, our low level alarm uh, will energize. So we can see the filling and emptying indicator on the screen as well. And there goes our pumps and there comes our low level alarm. And then we start ramping back up again. So a simulation is a very quick and easy way to check your setup, make sure that everything's operating properly. Um, and I hope you have enjoyed uh, this quick overview of programming the LT500. And good luck with all of those level applications out there. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.